we saw this pair of semi-detached next to the church and it said for sale and we're like oh we didn't know anything about it so we inquired into it and we ended up buying the two houses with the original intention of building them up and selling them since it was a pair of semis in the office we came up with an idea that we would break the two apart and make them look like one house but they are two houses now as we started building them uh, along the way it just somehow manifested into that this was going to be my home I ended up moving into with my wife and she was still my girlfriend at the time when we moved in. Um, and then we ended up welcoming Mitchie into our family too. So it turned into a family home here. One of the things about our studio is we like to think in three dimension. When we come into a space, you know, I wanna have focal points. What do you see? With only a 12 and a half foot interior width, it's a pretty small house. So how do you make it feel large? So by walking into the space, and you have the dining room and the living room, both within this near 30 foot sloping ceiling, and you see the architecture of it with the reclaimed beams up there. These are not new beams. Do you know there's staples in some of them? You know, there's cracks in some of them. Like you can see, these are 60, 70, 100. I don't know how old they are, but they've seen other days. It's part of the experience. You come in, it's not expected, and you look up and it's like, oh, wow. You're not enclosed in a small 12 and a half foot home or 12 and a half foot living room. We're not counting square footage, we're counting cubic foot. And when you're looking at cubic footage, now the space becomes huge. We called it as we were developing, we named this project the Urban Barn, right? Like being in the city, but a little bit of the, the rustic elements. So it's like you're not, you don't have to put plastic over the furniture to live in it. Again, you know, going back to reference how it was two houses originally, a pair of semis, and we broke it into two. We decided that we wanted to make it look like we ripped the two houses apart, so we continued that brick wall. A costly decision, but you know, quite nice. It's the actual same brick as the outside, it was just shaved down. It still wanted to be contemporary, you know, with the open field, but we have above the fireplace, we had the cold rolled steel, and then all the shelves that come out of the brick, these thin shelves, are all out of cold rolled steel as well. The rest of it was really quite contemporary, you know, the furnishings were a little bit of texture but quite comfortable and not too much, not overdoing it. The idea behind the location of the fireplace was that you get to enjoy it in both the kitchen and the family room. Rather than being centered on one area, it's centered on the both areas. And as we go into the kitchen, we have walnut cabinetry and within it we had the black fenix. So when you open it, we wanted that pop of black to tie in with the material of the back bank here, which is also a black phoenix material. You can open it up and you can cook in that space. And as we would entertain, it would, it, it would make us a nice feature. We chose to put a Calcutta gold island to be kind of the focal point, the star of the show. You'll see how the island has seating on both sides, so it becomes a table. And um, that's something that I'm adopting more and more. But what's nice about it is you don't need a breakfast area. That becomes your breakfast area. And you can sit face to face and talk rather than a traditional island where you're just in one row. And it, it worked for us. And you know, the dining room's been used probably about a handful of times over the last two plus years. <laughs> so. You know, a lot of city houses are very narrow and you don't get an opportunity for windows on the side. So what we have here to define the dining room from the living room from the kitchen, we jogged in each space here about 30 inches, which gives us the setback we need in order to appease the city bylaws and allowed us to put the windows on. And these windows reach up to where the slope starts for the roof. And it really just allows that much more light to pour in here. And it makes it that much more bright and not so much of a box. The third floor is the bedroom with the French doors that walk out to the little deck that overlooks the trees looking down the laneway. So it's actually quite a nice view. The bedroom is a good size. It's still about 150 square feet. It's much bigger than what you get in a condo and it works. Like the space works for what we need up there. It has a deck, it has the catwalk, and it just allowed the rest of the house to have this feel. And then we have the catwalk, which has the closet on it. The stairs come up on half of it and the closet's there. And then you lead into the bathroom. And the bathroom's actually 
one of my favorite bathrooms that we've done. Again, we brought the brick wall through there and you'll see the mirror slides side by side to expose a full medicine cabinet in a sense, but with the brick backing behind it as well. It has the tub in front of the window that you can sit and have a nice view. Of course, we have the blinds there for privacy. And then the shower, as you can see, it, it seems large, but you can only really use the first three feet of it which is still more than a standard shower, but it's a good size feeling because the illusion of it, even though the ceiling slopes down, the illusion gives it that it's a massive shower. It was a great learning experience about living in one of your houses and then seeing when you're doing a house that's originally supposed to be for spec for sale, noticing certain things that it's like, no, 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 now, hey, I have to have a place for the toaster. If we're, where the toaster is going to go, there has to be a plug there. <laughs> you know, simple things like that. I don't want to have to move it and plug it in every time. And it sounds simple, but sometimes when you're going for complete, you know, aesthetics of something, you oversee something or you overlook something because you don't envision yourself or embody yourself in the space as you're going along. There was value in that, but just coming home and sitting on the couch and, you know, looking up at the beams or watching the TV with the brick behind the wall, everything about it was a real treat. I always like to think our houses are different. We are thinking in cubic feet, you know, how do you think in the space rather than just how to maximize square footage, room after room after room. These houses are not for everyone. Some people want the standard, but for somebody who wants something a little different and wants an experience in the home, I've never gotten bored of it.